Hey, DT fam. Welcome back to another Vanilla Sunday. And obviously this time I am your host. And as much as I love astrology content, this week we're actually not going to do astrology content. But don't worry for those of you that do like it, it'll be back. I just thought maybe it'd be nice to like, you know, do something a little different. Anyways, um, and actually today's just going to be kind of a fun little entertaining episode. Um, I was like thinking of some funny stories that I was like telling someone recently. Um, actually that's someone being my partner. Um, and it just reminded me of like some like really funny stories that like I haven't been able to tell on the pod because like normally they're just not like, you know, sex related or sexy, you know? Um, so yeah, I thought maybe I'll just do a little fun episode on sometimes that when I look back on them, at least I get a really good laugh out of them. And uh, I hope y'all do too. We'll see how it goes. But anyways, okay, for the first one, I'm going to take you guys all the way back to college. So in college, I was dating my then ex-husband or my then boyfriend who, you know, you guys know as my ex-husband. And um, we were boyfriend and girlfriend. He was, you know, stationed in Enid doing flight training for the Air Force. And like on the weekends, we would I would either go up to Enid and drive to like go see he, go see him, or we would sometimes like meet in the middle in like Oklahoma City, because I was in Norman, Oklahoma, which is um, south of Oklahoma City. That's where my college was. So, and to give you guys a little bit of a backstory in pilot training in the Air Force, you go one of two routes. You either fly, so for example, if you're going to fly tankers or um, like bigger airplanes like C-17s or which is like a cargo airplane. Yeah, if you're going to fly tankers or cargo, refuelers, any of that, you're going to go the T-1 route. And the T-1, it's like this little training aircraft that looks like a little private jet. I think it's a Learjet. If I remember correctly, I don't remember the model. Anyways, it's Learjet. It looks like um, kind of like a small private jet that you would own. And that's what they train in if they're going to go that route. If they're going to go the fighter jet route, they're going to fly T-38s, which looks like just a little small fighter airplane. Obviously, it doesn't have like a carrier variant in terms of like any weapons or anything like that. Um, But anyway, so those are the two routes you go. So obviously at the time my um, ex-husband was flying the T1s because he later went on to fly um, refuelers. Anyways, so we're in Oklahoma City. We go to this burlesque bar and um, I just remember this was like towards the end of the night. I was like going to go pay. So I like walk up to the bar and I'm wait- I give the bartender my card and I'm like waiting there and suddenly like these two guys like kind of pull up right next to me and they're clearly kind of a little inebriated anyways. And you know, they're good looking dudes. Um, and I just remember <laughs> one of them is just standing there and then the other, he looks at me, he puts like his arm around his friend and he looks at me and he goes, do you know this guy's a fighter pilot? And I take one look at him and I was like, by that, do you mean he flies T-38s? And the way this, both of their jaws literally hit the bar top. I will never forget the way that guy just kind of like scrambled. And he was like, uh, uh, most girls don't know that. And I was like, yeah, my boyfriend's in the Air Force. And they were like, oh. And I was like, yeah. I laugh every time I think about that moment. I don't know. It was just so funny to me because I, th- I don't think they assumed that I would know anything about airplanes. And then I literally called them out on their shit. And poor guy, if you're listening or if you're out there, I hope that pickup line worked on someone else. I really do. Um, but it just, it did not work on me. Anyways, I thought that was funny. I always think back on that moment and laugh. I'm very fond memory of mine. And I remember it like clear as day. Anyway, so there's that one. Um, okay, now actually we're going to go even further back than college for this next story. And like, sometimes I think back to this one and I'm just like, the fact that I am like still on this planet to this day, like is, 
I'm very thankful for it. Let's just put it that way. But anyways, so in high school, we were in cheerleading, Camille and I. And like we and mind you, this was in the state of Texas. OK, so we grew up in Texas and um, so we were cheerleaders for our high school there in like the Dallas area. And oh, hi, Marie. Mama. For those of you on YouTube, you'll be able to see little Mo Wee Wee. For those of you on audio, you can probably hear her little chirps. And then also I have Tiesto just laying here right beside me. There's always cats, as you guys know. Anyways, okay. So, Cammie and I are part of the cheer team. And um, we had this, like, tradition that, like, when you were a senior, you, like, kidnapped your, like, freshman little. We had, like, bigs and little. So, like, the big was kind of, like, the senior that would show the... Hold on one second. Tiesto, do not miss up my recording. Okay. The big was like the senior that would show the little, the freshman, the ropes. And so like you got paired with a little your senior year and like you were the big. And there was this tradition where we would go and like kidnap the little. And we would go to like their house in the middle of the morning. It'd be like 4 or 5 a.m. And kind of like pull like a prank on them. And... um like, you know, you kidnap them, you take them to breakfast. Hold on, Tiesto, you're making me nervous. You're going to stop my recording. So you kidnap them, you take them to breakfast. And yeah, it was just like a fun thing. I remember like, you know, when we were, um, all right, there goes Tiesto. I remember when we were, uh, actually we were sophomores because the first year when we were freshmen, my mom didn't know what that was. And she was like, no. And then we were like so pissed that we didn't get kidnapped. So then they did it. Our, our bigs did it like the sophomore year anyways. But when we were seniors, we got paired with littles. And so, yeah, we played in this prank, whatever. Anyways, the girl that I had as my little, her mother gave us her address. And me and this other girl that was a junior were like going to go kidnap her. And um, <clears throat> obviously like as part of the whole prank or whatever. And when she gave us the address... She, like, just put, like, the house number in, like, the street, but, like, she didn't kind of, like, specify, you know, like, avenue, place, all, you know, street, court, whatever. Like, she didn't specify that, at least from memory. Like, I don't remember that she did. Or maybe she did and just didn't pay attention. Regardless, we go to this house. I'm 18 years old. The girl that's with me is, like, maybe 17, okay? I was driving, so, like, I drove us. We go to, and like, you know, we were like texting the mother and like letting her know. And like, obviously we've like pre-planned everything. We've like discussed like, okay, like this is the time we're going to do it. You know, she gave us like instructions where to go, blah, 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 blah. And we were like, cool. Okay. So (laughs) we go to this house and we're like texting the mom and she's not responding. And we're just kind of like, okay, you know, maybe she just, like, left the door unlocked, like, you know, because we were texting her to, like, open the door, and instead, and, like, she hadn't been responding for, like, maybe five, ten minutes, and so we were, like, okay, maybe she just left it unlocked, and, like, she'd given us instructions as to, like, where to go, so we're, like, we can just go in and follow the instructions. Sure enough, we get to this house, we open the door, and the door is unlocked. We're, like, okay, cool, we must be at the right house. We literally go to the like kitchen and like set like my car keys and my wallet down like some other stuff and then we like tiptoe up the stairs and like the layout doesn't look like what she had told us in like the message and we were like okay so we like went to one room we were like maybe we're just not understanding this correctly so like we went to one room and we open the door and we see what looks like like a boy like maybe like a teenage boy sleeping there and like she had a brother if I remember correctly I'm pretty sure she had a brother and so we were like okay oops wrong room it's his room and then we went to like another room and it was empty and then finally we went to a third room and like (laughs) I can't believe this happened like to this day I still cannot believe this happened we opened the door to this room let's say this girl that we're looking for her name is Haley let's say that's it I don't remember what it was anyways we open this door and we see someone like sleeping in their bed and like I guess from us opening the door whatever they must have like awoken and so we whisper we're like hi we're looking for Haley 
And the girl like literally like sits up, is like squinting, looking at us. And she goes, I think you have the wrong house. And we were like, what the fuck? Like at this point, I'm like, this is the state of Texas. Someone could have pulled out a gun and literally been like, what the fuck are you doing in my house? You know, self-defense, trespassing, whatever. And we were like, (laughs) I just like all, it felt like all of the blood like literally drained from my body. And I was just like, what the hell are we supposed to do now? So we were like, okay, thank you. And she literally just went back to sleep. I was like, bitch, if it had been my house, I would have been freaking the fuck out that there were two random girls just looking for someone named Haley. Anyways, so she went back to bed. We closed her bedroom door. At least we were considerate. Uh, So yeah, there's that. And then we like tiptoed down the stairs and you would think that like, you know, we'd probably leave with some haste. No, we stopped, looked at all the family photos on the stairway, which we hadn't noticed before on the way up, was definitely not the right family at all. And at that point we were like, we made a huge mistake. So we continued tiptoeing down the stairs, grab all of our stuff, which like I had left like some stuff on the counter and then the other girl had like left something like closer to the laundry room. I don't even know why we, we did that. Our shoes were downstairs. Anyways, put our shoes on, go back out the door. By this time, we exit the house, we check our phones, and the mom had finally texted back. I guess she had just kind of fallen asleep um, and like hadn't responded. And so we called her and we were like, uh, I think we just went to the wrong house. And she was like, which one did you go to? And I was, and we like literally, and she's like, oh, she was like, there was like an avenue and then there was like a court. And we went to the one on avenue and she, they lived on the one that was like court. So, but it was like the same street number and the same, or the same house number and the same street. So one could see how that could be confusing. Anyways, yeah. So we we finally go to the right house, kidnap the girl, whatever, do the whole thing. And then we show up obviously late to breakfast. And I just remember by the time we show up, we were like, (laughs) one of the moms, we walk in and she was like, we didn't know if you guys were going to make it. And I was like, what do you mean? And she was like, well, the other mom told us that you guys went to the wrong house. We thought either y'all got arrested for trespassing or shot, you know, for trespassing. And I was like, Thank you for bringing up the fact that those could have been two very possible possibilities, but luckily they weren't. So yeah, that was the time I accidentally trespassed. In my defense, though, their door was unlocked and I was like, who leaves their door unlocked? Their front door. Like, not in, And it was a safe neighborhood. I'll give them that. But still, like, you don't leave your fucking front door unlocked. Um, so yeah. That is another fond memory. I find myself, like, I think about that moment a lot because I'm like, it could have gone south in so many ways. And I still think about the woman. Like, did she think that that was a dream? Like, do you think that later that morning she woke up and she was like, did I just dream two, like, teenage girls at my door asking for some random person named Haley? I hope they started locking their front door after that. We didn't leave anything there. So I'm like, they wouldn't have otherwise, like it could have been a fever dream to her for all we know, but I really hope they started locking their front door. So, uh, so there's that one. Um, so yeah, that one's from high school. The other one's from college. Um, this one, I'll take you guys to my airplane sales days. Um, so I never actually really talked about it much on the pod, but basically before, you know, I were actually at the beginning when I was doing the pod, I had a corporate job selling airplanes um, for a manufacturer. And um, I mean, probably by the end of the story, you can tell which one it is, but it's irrelevant information by now. Anyways, you can also go look at my LinkedIn and figure all of it out, um, which I don't think I've actually even updated my LinkedIn. So it probably says I'm still there. I don't know. Anyways, I did it for eight years. Um, I started off selling like service and parts um, to the service centers in uh, Europe. So I had the team in Europe that I was supporting and then I went on to sell propellers. And that was like the first two years and then the last like five to six years were selling airplanes. So which was like the piston line. Anyways, it was a really badass job. I loved it. However, by the end of it, I just kind of realized I get no emotional fulfillment from selling a rich person an airplane. I mean, like it was fun. But I just, like, I realized it, like, didn't really fill my cup. And I, I, I didn't feel like I had, like, a purpose other than, like, contributing to a major company's bottom line. 
and I sold a lot. So I definitely contributed to that bottom line, but I digress. <clears throat> Anyways, so one time my uh, coworker and I were flying from her airport to, um, where are we flying to? I don't remember. It might have been an air show, like work related, um, or it might have just been some meetings. I don't know. We had, they gave us like, we had demo airplanes and um, we were like able to like fly the airplanes around to like go see customers or go to air shows or whatever. We also had a demo team um, that would fly around with us and they were like, and they would do customer demos. So like anytime that like you were interested in buying an airplane, basically like either a demo pilot or one of, our, of, of us sales directors would like do the demo and show you the airplane. Anyways, but my coworker and I were, I don't remember where we were going, but we were taking this airplane somewhere. And I'm used to, I, fl- I flew mainly like the high wings because those tended to sell in my territory the most. And by high wing, I mean that like the wings are on top of the airplane rather than on the bottom of the airplane. Um, and so for the high wings, like the way that you set the parking brake was like you pulled on it like and it did like one click, two click. And so like that's what I was always used to with the parking brake on those so this time we were flying one of the low wings it's called a bonanza really fast sporty speedy airplane so anyways we get to like the edge of the runway so and they call it the hold short line so i'm holding short of the runway meaning i'm I'm before the line i'm not going onto the runway yet um and so like part of the checklist then is to like you know put on the parking brake and Um, go through your checklist before you tell the control tower that you're like ready to go. So that's what we were doing. I was in the left seat. My coworker was in the right seat. And so she told me, she was like, okay, pull the parking brake. And so I did. And my mind goes to like, okay, I need to hear it click twice because, um, you know, that's what I'm used to in the other type of airplane. So I like go and I like pull once and I don't hear the click. And so then I like pull again. And, you know, guys, I have strong ass arms. Um, I'm kidding. Uh, I'm not that vain anyways, but I do have a lot of strength. Anyways, I pull once, don't hear the click, pull it again with like all my might to try and get this fucking parking brake set. And I end up pulling the entire parking brake out, which is basically like this little lever thing with like this giant metal rod. So I pulled the entire parking brake out of the cowling and (laughs) That basically meant we were stuck exactly where we were, meaning no one else could take off until we moved our asses. So I pulled it out. My coworker's like, what the fuck just happened? Um, And I'm like, what the fuck just happened? And um, and then at that point, we had to tell the control tower that we uh, couldn't go anywhere because I broke the parking brake. And then, thank fucking God, there was like a little mechanic shop right there on the airfield and we were like able to we like called them and we were like hey we've got an issue they're like what's going on and we were like nikki pulled the parking brake now it's broken it's out of the whole freaking cowling so like we can't even like put it in and like do anything about it that means like the parking brake is set so like the airplane isn't going anywhere luckily they were able to like and like there were literally like two or three airplanes behind us waiting to take off and uh, we were stuck right in front of the runway. And this was like, uh, if, if I remember correctly, this airport had one runway. And so that was like the only way that you could take off. It was a small airport in like the middle of Alabama. So, or no, 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 Georgia. Anyways, thank God for this little, um, what do you call it? Shop there on the field. They were able to come get us, tow us. Uh, over to a different area so everyone else could take off, fix the parking brake, and then we were able to um, get back <clears throat> to our des- or like get back to flying, head to our destination. Um, but yeah, that was one of my more embarrassing moments in my flying career. And um, everyone on my team remembered that one. Let's just put it that way. So yeah, if you fly airplanes, careful with those parking brakes. Okay, now this next one, we're going to go back to uh, college. So, and I hope you guys are finding these entertaining, but these are ones that like I just remember and like I laughed uh, to myself, you know, especially that one. I'm like, what was I doing? What was I thinking? It wasn't the same airplane. Why did I pull it that hard? 
No one let me live it down. Everyone remembered. It's okay. And to this day, actually. Um, yeah, they still remember. Not long ago, my friend, she or she like had sent me the video, but she was like, never forget. And I was like, how could I? Okay, so for this one, we're going to go back to uh, high school. No, 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 college. No. Okay. So for this one, we're going to go back to college. I worked at Chili's in college. And um, as most of you know, Cami and I were born in Argentina. So we speak Spanish. And um, in the Chili's that I worked at, a lot of the line cooks were Mexican. And so I just remember one day I like go back there and you know I had a customer that was asking for like a corn on the cob and so I go back there and I say in Spanish like um uh, like hey can you give me a and then the Spanish word that I used for corn was choclo because in Argentina the way we say corn on the cob is choclo and I'm not kidding when I say literally all of the line cooks in the you know kitchen like stopped and they were like you need what and I was like choclo and they're like what the fuck is choclo and I was like, choclo, elote. And I was like, okay, elote is the like Mexican word for corn on the cob. And they were like, you call elote choclo? And I was like, yeah. They're like, that's what, how you call it in Argentina? And I was like, yeah. And I don't know if they had just like never heard it before, but they like literally all started laughing in unison. And then, <laughs> which was so funny. And then after that, they decided they all were going to start calling me choclo. So I'm not kidding when I say my nickname at that Chili's in Norman, Oklahoma was Choclo. And you know how like on the receipt, it'll be like your server today was Nicole, you know, or Nikki, whatever. Um, My manager, who also thought it was absolutely hilarious that I said Choclo, and he was there too for the whole exchange, uh, decided to change to where on the receipt it would say your server today was Choclo. So, yeah, I'm Choclo. I don't know if I've told that one before. Maybe I have, maybe I haven't. Um, but, yeah, that one I think about often as well. And that was lit- I worked there for like two, three years. No, two years because my last year I worked at a different restaurant. But, yeah, so for two years, everyone called me Choclo. So, yeah, okay. <clears throat> Okay, now this last story is from my divorce. And I don't really care when I think back on it, you know, the lost opportunity, whatever you want to call it. Um, But like every single time I tell this story, everyone just like shakes their head and they just absolutely cannot believe Um that I did this. But let me put it this way. Okay, so when my ex-husband and I were divorcing, he his work schedule was where he was like gone 16 days of the month flying and then home 14 days. So that was like his rotation. But at the time, like when we were technically separated, like he was living with his girlfriend. He was living with his girlfriend and I was like in our house. And, you know, we'd been in the house for probably, let's see, we moved in in 2017. We were divorcing in 2021. Okay, so like, what is that, five years? I'm bad at quick math. Anyway, so we'd been in the house for five years. And not only that, but like it accumulated everything from like nine years worth of being together. So there was a lot of shit in that house. And, you know, so then like not only am I dealing with like the emotional labor of divorcing and like my entire life just like shattering into a million pieces and everything just going to absolute shit. But he when he was home, he would go stay with his girlfriend because he didn't want to deal with like me and my emotions and he didn't want to upset her by staying with me. So I had to like, you know, not only did I have to sell the airplane, but I had to like, you know, focus on selling the house and get every, uh, getting everything ready and making sure it looked good and then packing up all of our stuff. So there were a lot of things that I was like, do you want this? Are you going to keep this? Are you going to, you know, like do anything with it? And I would just text him and be like, what do you want to do with this? And most of the time he'd be like, just sell it, just sell as much as you can. So like I sold like our bedroom furniture. I sold a bunch of other furniture we had. I sold, um, you know, like just random things that we had accumulated over the years that like we had no use for. 
and a lot of it I sold on Facebook Marketplace. So, <laughs> uh, I remember I in his in the garage were his golf clubs, and I was like, "What do you want to do with your golf clubs? Are you going to take them? Are you going to keep them? Do you want me to sell them? What?" And he was like, "You know what? You can go ahead and sell those." And I was like okay and I was like how much do you want me to sell them for and he was like I don't know just look it up I really don't care you know by then like I you know how much we were selling everything for we didn't care and I was just kind of like splitting everything in half and I was just wanting to get rid of stuff like as quick as I could so a lot of times I just listed it for super cheap so I I listed his entire bag like the bag the golf clubs and like all the things that he like the covers that he had on the golf clubs I listed all of that for twenty dollars on Facebook Marketplace. I have no idea how much a golf club costs. I don't care. I've never been golfing, um, and uh, but I do know one thing. My ex husband was pretty bougie, so knowing him, he probably had some decent golf clubs. I wasn't really thinking of that at the time. I just wanted someone to take these golf clubs off my freaking hands. So that could be one less thing that I had to worry about when packing and, you know, separating everything, blah, 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 blah. So I listed them for $20 on Facebook Marketplace. Within like two hours, this guy was like, I can be there tonight at 7 p.m. to pick up the golf clubs. And I was like, sure. And he was like, and I didn't really ask any more questions. I gave him the address where to come pick him up. Uh, there's that. And then later when he pulled up, the guy, <laughs> the guy comes and he was like, he like brought like a bag with him. And I'm like, what is this? And he was like, well, I own like a hair care brand. I brought you some like, you know, some of our products and stuff. And I was like, why'd you do that? And he was like, and or I was just kind of like confused, like, okay, thank you. Like, I appreciate it. But he was like, do you know how much these golf clubs are worth? And I was like, no. And he was like, whose golf clubs are these? And I was like, well, my husband and I are divorcing and, you know, he just asked me to sell them. And he was like, does he know you're selling them for $20? And I was like, I mean, I, I told him that I was selling them and he didn't really care about the price. And so, you know, it, it doesn't really matter to either of us. <laughs> There's cash. Me. And he was like, okay, let me tell you one thing. They're worth a lot more than $20. And because of that, I'm going to give you this hair care and, you know, give you that as a gift for letting me take these off your hands for only $20. And I was like, you know what, my guy, I hope you enjoy them. I hope you, you know, get whatever use. I don't even care if you go resell them and you do like the, the due diligence of like checking the price of how much they're worth and like actually listing them for their value. I was just happy he was taking them off my hands. I got some shampoo and conditioner out of it. And there's that. Um, and it's really funny because, yeah, every time I tell that story, everyone shakes their heads and they cannot believe it. Like I said, I really don't care. But the funny thing was, is I also was selling our grill. And once again, I asked my ex-husband, I was like, how much do you want me to sell it for? He was like, I don't give a shit. Just as whatever price will get it to, you know, be sold. So that like, we just really wanted everything off our hands. And I was like, okay, I'm going to list it for 40 bucks. So I listed the grill on Facebook Marketplace for $40. And within a few hours, someone contacted me, bought it, came and picked it up. And it was the same thing. He was like, do you know how much this is worth? And I was like, no idea. And he was like, it's worth a lot more than $40. Why are you selling it for this? And I was like, my ex-husband and I are divorcing and I just want it off my hands. And he was like, no more questions asked and left. Um, so yeah, to whoever enjoyed the grill for $40. It was a nice grill. It was actually a really nice grill. I don't know how much a grill costs. I figure what, a couple hundred bucks? I don't know. I thought 40 was a fair price. Um, and cheap enough to get people to like take it off my hands. So yeah, that was, uh, that was how my divorce went. I'm trying to think if there was anything else that I sold for like probably a ridiculously pr low price. Probably if I'm being honest because I just didn't care at that point. And on top of that, we sold our house at like peak housing market. We were fine. Anyways. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this short little episode of some uh, fun memories that I look back on fondly and always love to share because they just bring maybe either a little chuckle 
or a little smile, laugh, whatever to my face. And uh, yeah, I don't know what Cammie's doing her next vanilla Sunday on, but we'll figure it out. Thank you guys for tuning in and we'll see you next time.